Hello lovely people and welcome to my kitchen laboratory. This week's topic is damping factor. So damping factor of an amplifier is a highly debatable topic because a lot of people say that it doesn't matter is a spec from old age and now with modern amplifiers and modern subwoofers is just a spec that doesn't matter at all. However, one person was very interested about this. His name is Frederick Towns and thanks to his donation that kind of covers my expenses for some stuff and my time, I decided to make this video almost specifically for him but at the same time for myself so I would know and for all of you so you would know as well. So what is amplifier's damping factor and why should we care? When you have a any kind of speaker you have a motor and motor inside is nothing else than a coil moving inside a magnet and if some of you know from electromagnetic from physics that whenever you do that there's some current that is being generated in the coil so while the amplifier is giving out voltage and current into the speaker while the cone moves it gives some stuff back into the amplifier. Now, depending on how good the amplifier dampens or kind of remove that extra signal, now the question is how good an amplifier is dealing with that extra energy that is pushed from the subwoofer back into the amplifier. And that is what is kind of the damping factor. Basically, the damping factor tells you how much that signal that's coming from the coil back into the amplifier is being dampened. And the damping factor is calculated because it depends on the output impedance of the amplifier or any other kind of device. So now the question arises why the damping factor or the output impedance of the amplifier should be important and why do you care about it? If you have a subwoofer and if you have a kind of old school subwoofer, which this is, old school subwoofers and speakers in general have a very, very light suspension. So basically you can see that I barely touch it and the cone already is moving. Exactly the same on this one. I just barely, barely apply pressure and the cone is moving already. That means when you have a very sharp transient, such as a kick or a drum or like a bass note, the cone moves and if the suspension is very soft, by itself, it kind of resonates around FS and it kind of dies down. So we can see that from the impulse response when the impulse ideally should be just up down and that's it but some speakers they kind of wiggle around until they kind of die down the length of the impulse in theory depends on the damping of the amplifier because the, if the amplifier has a very high damping factor it kind of shortens that impulse and gets rid of all the extra energy and ideally you should have just one pulse up down and that's it nothing else if the damping factor again in theory is very low and the amplifier doesn't dampen the speaker, that speaker kind of rings and the impulse goes on, goes on and it kind of extends. If we translate this to kind of music, the speakers that is highly damped by the amplifier is producing like more accurate sound, more accurate bass notes because the bass hits and it stops playing. If it's not dampened and the bass note extends, it's not accurate, it's not impactful, and it kind of drags out. It might sound a bit mellow or that kind of stuff, I don't know. But this is basically the theory, how damping factor affects the sound and the speaker. Now the question is, how am I gonna test this theory? So first order of business is obviously, I need to find out the damping factor of my amplifiers that I have. The damping factor, if we're gonna have a look at the Wikipedia, uh, DF is basically the load impedance divided by the source impedance. So the load impedance is going to be your speaker plus the wires or whatever and the source impedance is going to be the impedance of the amplifier outputs. Now we can measure this with using a multimeter which is this one or we can do an impedance sweep and we're going to see that. Now how to measure this? 
The output impedance of an amplifier can be measured with something like this, which is Quant Asylum QA403. In the software, we have some automatic tests. So now it's just running. I put this amplifier on five watt of output into a four ohm load. And for this test, what the program does, it measures the impedance, that is a voltage drop, between two different loads. So ideally, you probably would want to use 8 and 4 ohm load, but since I built this for amplifier testing, I have 4 ohms and I have 2 ohms. It doesn't really matter as long as the amplifier can drive that load. Now, single channel of an amplifier can be run on 4 and on 2 ohms equally good, so it's not a problem. So I'm running at about 5 watts, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you very quickly automatic tests, and here we have power output impedance. If I'm going to click on this one, I have a few options to choose. So I'm going to choose the output level that gives me those five watts. And then here I'm choosing uh, first impedance, which is 3.9 ohms. And the second impedance is 2.1. So I just put exact values that I have there. And if I'm going to run this one, okay, then basically it asks me set the load to 3.9 ohms. So this is set on that. I'm going to click enter. It kind of goes through all the measurement. After it goes through everything, it's going to ask me to select a different impedance. I'm going to cancel this because it takes a lot of time. So I'm going to do just untick this put it here and now the amplifier is connected to two ohms and it runs a second one when it does the two passes then it generates a graph which looks something like this and this graphs is impedance in ohms versus frequency now the problem is that the damping factor is not a fixed thing. Damping factor depends on loads of things. The main thing is the frequency, mainly because the impedance of a driver, any kind of driver, is not the same. So you know that a 4 ohm driver is not actually 4 ohms. And when you have impedance peak at FS, it can be 10, 15, 20 ohms. And even on a set impedance that I have here, which on resistors, we can see that the output impedance of this amp specific amplifier is not a line as well. It kind of rises at a higher frequencies, but here is kind of the same. So for this specific amplifier, I just measured it. It shows that the impedance is about 0 0.023 ohms, something like that. So if I'm going to take a typical calculator and again damping factor will depend on the impedance so if we're going to take a nominal 4 ohm impedance which is 4 ohms and we're going to divide it by 0 0.023 i'm going to have a damping factor of 174 let's say so this amplifier has a damping factor of 174 now is it a lot is it not uh, i don't know we will see but what i need to do is uh, with all my stash of amplifiers that I have, I need to find two amplifiers with very different damping factors so that I could test the speakers and ideally have different results. So I need to find one amplifier that has a very high damping factor and another amplifier that has a very low damping factor. Now, ideally, I would want to have all amplifiers of the same class. So I'm gonna go and check all the AB amplifiers that I have. If I will see, because I haven't done these measurements yet, if I will see that all the ABs have a similar damping factor, then I'm gonna jump to the D class because D class amplifiers have much, much higher damping factor, like above 500, it could be a thousand or even more. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. And this why this video is kind of an introduction just to show you what I'm doing and how, because this stuff is going to take time. When I'm going to have the damping factors of the amplifiers, I'm going to choose two, as I mentioned, one with the highest and one with the lowest damping factor. And then we're going to measure. We're going to do real world scenarios where we're going to measure speakers with those two amplifiers. And ideally, an old school speaker such as this with very soft suspension should have a different impulse with an amplifiers that will have 
different damping factors. And again, this is in theory, and this is what I'm gonna test. So I bought this for literally 10 pounds. It's a very, very old subwoofer. And probably if you saw any discussions about damping factor, you notice that a lot of people say that the damping factor mattered back in the day when you had old school subwoofers with very soft suspension. Because nowadays, when you have a speaker with very stiff suspension, the suspension itself dampens the movement of the actual cone and you don't need the high damping factor from the amplifier to control the speaker. And like back in the day, the amplifiers controlled the speakers. So this is an earthquake, I don't know, whatever, EQ128P. Uh, I did check the specs of this one and the VAS of this subwoofer is something like above 100 liters, like 120 or 150 liters, something like that. These days, probably you're gonna say there's no subwoofers like this, like soft suspension with very high VAS. However, they are. And those subwoofers, everybody uses in SQ and they're called Acoustic Elegance. So I couldn't get my hands on an Acoustic Elegance subwoofer because in the UK, they cost like mega money. And I settled up on this, which is 10 pounds. I'm not saying it's the same quality as Acoustic Elegance, obviously, but it kind of simulates Acoustic Elegance soft suspension with very high VAS and very low FS. So I'm gonna do an impedance sweep for this just to see where the FS is. Uh, probably you can see that this cone is a little bit pushed in because it has a little bit of spider sag. So again, it's a very, very old subwoofer. Now I will be testing subwoofers and Frederick asked me to test other speakers as well. So for mid bass, I'm gonna be testing this, which is a Bissaton BG20. It is an eight ohm driver. It is a home audio full range driver. It's not a like a mid bass, but it has quite lowish FS, about 40, 50 hertz or something like that. And it has a very, very super soft suspension. It's like 110 liter suspension. So I'm gonna have this one. The stiffer suspension, I'm gonna be using probably the Illusion Audio because that has a suspension of like six liters, which is a very, very stiff suspension. And and for the subwoofer, for the stiff suspension subwoofer, I'm going to be using the Alpine Status HDZ110, uh, which has, again, a very, very stiff suspension, probably like 30 or 40 liters. So it's like four or five times less than this. I would like to test mid ranges and tweeters as well, how the damping factor varies on them. Me personally, I don't think that for mid ranges and tweeters it matters at all. And the problem is that I don't have very different suspensions, mid ranges and tweeters. They're all kind of the same. Typical VAS of a three, three and a half mid range is like three, two or four liters. So it's not a big variance. So for the subwoofers, I'm gonna be using two subwoofers, soft and stiff, mid bass two, soft and stiff, and mid range and tweeter is just one. And basically I will be measuring the impulse response of those drivers on two different amplifiers. Because as I mentioned, I wanna see how different damping factor amplifiers influence different speakers. I will be doing the measurements in free air because I don't want uh, to put anything in the box because if I'm gonna put anything in the box, that impulse is gonna be not like truly the driver's impulse, but it's gonna be a combination between the box and the driver. Because as we know, the box, especially reflections and the air suspension inside the box, influences how the driver behaves. But since we want to see like the raw response of any kind of amplifier, everything is gonna be done in free air. Comment, vote, and I would really like to hear your thoughts. Does the damping factor affect the subwoofer, the mid bass, mid ranges and tweeters, or it doesn't do anything at all and it's just a myth? Please comment. I would really like to know. A very quick jump to the next day. I already measured all the amplifiers that I have and I picked up these. So the amplifier that has the worst damping factor, which is about a hundred or even less, is this MRP 
uh, F240, and it is kind of the lowest performing amplifier in general that I have. It has the highest distortion and kind of very little power, maybe like 20, 25 watts of power. Now, uh, if I want to keep the same class as AB class, because this is AB, the amplifier with the highest damping factor is obviously my F409, because I noticed that amplifiers with good specs in general are good in like all regards, and amplifiers that have average or bad specs are like bad in all regards as well. So this one has a damping factor of 460. So it's more than four times the difference between these. And uh, now I decided to include this one, which is a class D, the XA70F. This one has an amping factor of close to 800. So it's even more than this, like twice as much. So I think I'm gonna be doing three amplifiers with very different damping factors. And just bear in mind, it's gonna be AB, AB, and D. 100, 400 something, close to 800. And now, I just need to measure the subwoofer, the mid-range, and whatever I'm gonna have. So stay tuned for the results. They're probably gonna be next week. And thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.